Hello, my quilty friends. I'm Stacy of Stacy Create Stuff. Welcome to the Block of the Week series, Patching the Hole in the Barn Door. Welcome back for those who have been following the series and welcome if you are new. But without further ado, let's get to this week's slightly corny poem. I'm getting hungry, said Auntie Grace. They walked as far as the chapel. I've just the thing that will satisfy a delicious bright yellow pineapple. And this week's block is a pineapple block. And we will be using foundation paper piecing as the technique. So the purpose of this series is to get you to test a bunch of different techniques and both in piecing and in construction. And so this week we have foundation paper piecing. If you have signed up for my email list to get the instructions each week, this week's instructions will include a template that you can sew. Here it is. And I'm going to show you how to, how to do foundation paper piecing. Now I will tell you, this is not necessarily one of my most favorite techniques, but it does have its place. I'll talk a little bit about that after I show you how to put this block together. So let's get going. I brought you over to the sewing machine since this is where all the action is going to take place. And if you have subscribed to my email list for patching the hole in the barn door, then you will have received this in your email this morning, at least the morning that this video comes out. And this template is a foundation paper piecing template. It is six and a half inches from the dark line to the dark line here, six inches from the edge of the inner line. So you wanna make sure that it measures those dimensions before you start sewing. So if you've never foundation paper pieced before, the pattern is printed on one side of the paper, of course, and you're gonna be sewing, or your fabric will be on the back side, but you will be sewing on this side. So the fabric will be uh, downward. You can trim off the excess paper. It makes it a little bit easier. I'm going to go grab my fabric scissors and do just that. All right, so I have trimmed all the way around the block. I did leave a little bit of a margin um, beyond the, the trimming, and that is fine. I have also set my stitch length on my machine to 1.8. And that's going to give it, you can even do a little bit smaller. That is going to help make smaller stitches, which perforate the paper more, makes it easier to tear the paper off in the end. The colors that I'm using for this block are yellow, orange, and the bright green. That says pineapple, don't you think? I've trimmed down the green, which is going to go in the center. It'll also go in the outer corners. We'll get to those in a bit so that the piece of fabric is larger than area number one. And I'm gonna flip this over and place this piece face up. And you can put a little dab of a glue stick to kind of help hold that in place. And then you just wanna hold it up to the light and make sure that the edge of the fabric goes well beyond all of the lines surrounding area one. So mine do. The first color uh, that I'm going to add to this, you can see there the next area is two and three, four, and five. Those are all going to be in yellow. So I have some pieces of yellow that I have cut. Um, these are about one and a, I think three quarter inches. You want them again to be much bigger than the area that they're going to be covering. Just makes it a lot easier. And I'm going to turn my piece upside down again, and let's see, area two is down here, and I'm just going to place the edge of the yellow fabric pretty close to, I have quite a bit of excess green fabric going past that line. I'm going to hold this up to the light again, and I just want to make sure that there is 
yellow fabric going beyond the sewing line, which is the line between area one and area two. And that there is enough yellow fabric that when I fold it over, it will not only cover this, but also come down into here. So I'm gonna move this back just a little bit. Yep, that should be good. All right, with those in place, I'm gonna grab onto it, flip it over, making sure not to move the fabric. Bring it over to the machine. And I'm going to stitch along that line that is between area one and area two. Uh, it's fine to stitch a little bit before the line and a little bit after. You definitely wanna make sure that you stitch the entire line though. pull this off, trim my threads. I like to trim as I go because there's a lot of thread. All right, you can hopefully see the sewn line here and I'm just going to finger press that in place. Now this yellow fabric you can kind of see through so I wanna go back, I'm gonna fold the paper back a little bit and just trim with my fabric scissors a little closer to that line, leaving, you know, about a quarter of an inch. All right, and then folding that back in place, giving that a good finger press there. Area three is next, so I'm gonna take my next piece of yellow fabric face down. The only piece that is face up is that very first piece. After that, it's all face down. And again, after holding it to the light a couple of times, then I'm gonna flip it over, sew along that line. Right. And again, you can see there is excess fabric. So if I fold that back, I will say that before I trim away, it's always a good idea to just double check that this piece indeed comes well past, and it does, it's practically over into the 21, um, that it covers fully and there's enough of a seam allowance for when you sew in, in this case, piece 12. Do that before you trim, just in case you have to do a little frogging. All right, so I'm folding my paper back, just makes it a little easier. Give it a trim. Again, fold that really well and finger press that in place. Piece four is next. Got that positioned, flip it over, and sew. Finger press that in place, double check that it covers the area, it does. Same thing, I can fold, fold the paper back and trim. All right, one more yellow piece to go. Obviously it goes here. Hold it up to the light to make sure it's covering the area correctly. And I'm gonna sew that in place. All right, and again, just double checking that this piece, yes, whew, just makes it, okay. And I'm gonna go ahead and trim the excess. I think you're probably seeing a pattern here. 
And again, a good finger press. And that first round is all in place. So now we have piece number six, six. And this is going to be orange. So likewise, I have cut some pieces. And this next line that's being sewn is going to go between, I'm sewing on the line that separates the five and the two. So all along there. And when I place this piece, I want to make sure that this edge is going about a quarter of an inch. So in, in essence, I'll be sewing along here. All right, I've got that in place. Flip that over. All right, and now as we flip that back, I'm gonna double check that this edge comes past the six into the 15. It does. Whew. And I'm gonna fold this paper down and again, trim off the excess. Finger press that into place and get ready for piece number seven. And that's gonna go along this edge. So I'm gonna go ahead and fast forward through this. And then if I come up with any other little tips, I'll let you know what they are as we go. These pieces that are going to be on the edge, you want to make sure that they come to the edge or really close to it, certainly past the quarter inch line. And actually, as we remember, I have cut my template here beyond. So really the piece needs to at least come to this dark line and it goes past it. So I know that that is good. Just a few more pieces of yellow and then we'll do the green corners. It's okay if your seam allowance is a little less than a quarter of an inch. Okay, you can see that the only pieces that we have left are the corners, which I'm going to do in the green. And that starts with this corner here. I'm going to cut a little bit smaller piece of fabric so it's a little easier to work with. Now I can leave this piece or I can trim it down a little further. We're going to be basting along here, um, but I think I can maybe eke out a, use this leftover bit of fabric for another triangle. So I'm going to go ahead and trim this. There we go. Okay. 
and I roughly trimmed off the other piece as well. So that was 22, 23 is our next triangle. Okay, I just need to trim off the excess fabric on these corners. If you were paying really close attention, you may have noticed that I did the last two out of order. I did 25 and then 24. And in this particular block, it didn't make any difference because the blocks were not dependent upon each other. Like I didn't have to do 25 after 24 because they were not opposite corners. They weren't even touching. Um, in some paper piece patterns, it's more crucial um, that you definitely go in order. All right, I'm going to take this over to the iron and give it a good press. Then I'm going to come back and I am going to sew just inside the cutting line with a basting stitch. So before I forget, I'm going to go ahead and up my stitch length to about four. I'll be right back. All right, with my pineapple block pressed, I'm going to go ahead, flip it over, and with that longer stitch length, so it's really just a basting stitch, I am going to sew inside the cutting line, between the cutting line and the uh, edge of the finished block. All right, I'm gonna take this over and trim with my rotary cutter right along the finished line of that block. So as you can see, the purpose of using foundation paper piecing is to give you precision. Now, lots of foundation paper piecing blocks have intricate pictures. They're really great for things like mariner's compasses where you get these like very exacting points, often long and skinny. Um, this block totally could have been constructed with just strips of fabric and some measurements, but it's a good block for learning to paper piece because it builds outward. And you're, while well, you get these lovely precise points here, right up to uh, my square, um, and that's fantastic. So if you've never tried paper piecing, uh, this is a good way to start. If you're a paper piecing guru, um, then this was probably pretty easy for you. But it gives you a taste, if you are new to paper piecing, of what paper piecing can do. And there are all sorts of fabulous paper piecing patterns Whew, that's a mouthful, uh, out there. And there's lots of great tutorials um, to do that. I'm not a big foundation paper piecer. Um, obviously, I have done it before. And I do like its precision. I've used it on things like a Mariner's Compass where, you know, points had to just be exact. But in general, I'm not a big foundation paper piecer. So it's not necessarily something that's for everyone. But I think it's important to give it a try. And here is the finished block, and here is the back. So I have removed as much of the paper as I could. There might be uh, a few little spots. Oftentimes they're in the, the little bits of the seams there, but might give a little bit more, more attention, and I can probably get a bit more of that out of there. Those will not hurt anything if they get wilted right in. You just don't really want to leave the you know, whole sheet in there. There are a ton of YouTube tutorials on how to do foundation paper piecing. So if you're still a little unsure about foundation paper piecing, you may want to check some of those out. But I think that it's worth giving it a try, especially with this block, because it's a relatively straightforward block. There aren't a lot of teeny tiny pieces. Um, and 
it's a, it's a pretty good, pretty good block to start with. So I hope you will give that a try. If you've not already signed up for my email list to get the patterns into your inbox each week, there is a link in the description below. Click on that and I will send you the blocks as they come out. And if you're signing up before May 1st, you'll receive all of the back previous blocks to catch you up. After May 1st, I will be reverting back to sending any new signups the blocks one week at a time. All the videos are in my playlist and I keep adding to them as we add our blocks. I hope you'll give foundation paper piecing a try. We have one block left. Can you believe it? It's already been almost 12 weeks. Well, 12 weeks if you count the starter session. So we're getting there. After block 12, there'll be another video, maybe two, that tell you how you can set the blocks into at least three different settings. So I'll tell you a little secret and that is I have already started constructing my quilt. So I can't wait to put it all together and to show you. It's colorful and it's fun and I love it. So until next time, I'm Stacy of Stacy Create Stuff. Bye.